Today, let's talk about a super rare UFC injury. Essentially, a fight causing a compartment syndrome of the upper thigh, which required an emergency fasciotomy. And I'll put a picture up right there. This was an injury sustained by Austin Hubert after his first win at UFC Fight Night 158 in Vancouver. Let's go over this rare injury in more detail. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, I break down injuries as they happen so that average fans can better understand what's going on. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date. For now, let's go back to this injury. So in September 2019, Austin Huber, after winning his first UFC fight, collapsed in an elevator hours after due to extreme compartment syndrome of his right upper thigh. Now, why is this such a rare and unique injury? Well, as a doctor, let me tell you that even though compartment syndrome is something we see in practice, compartment syndrome of the upper thigh is almost never heard of. So the fact that Austin sustained this injury, which required emergency surgery, having him look like this is absolutely astonishing. Austin does state in reports that the fight itself was pretty uneventful, didn't feel like he took that many leg kicks, maybe all of seven. And I mean, that's nothing next to what you saw in the Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor fight, which I covered up in here, where he truly did develop a compartment syndrome in the bottom leg, causing the nerve palsy. So it's quite a unique injury in that it happened so many hours afterwards. And what Austin had, had mentioned was that he was in an elevator, he felt off, felt completely woozy, and then was gone and passed out. And that's when they took him into the ER. So Hubert states when he was at the hospital that his right leg was three times the size of his left leg and it was hard as a rock. The other thing he was told while he got to the ER and after he had surgery was, you know, this was the first time in UFC history that someone needed to be operated on for this condition, kind of leading to how rare it truly is. So what is compartment syndrome? Compartment syndrome is essentially an increase in pressure of a compartment in the body. Now these compartments are made up of a fascia and, and muscles. So if you look here, you'll see all these muscles in this upper leg. Over the muscles, you're gonna see something called fascia, which is this light covering on this anatomy specimen. Now you'll also see it down below as well. You can also have fascia in between different muscle groups, sectioning them off. So in the lower leg, you have kind of four different areas. You have an anterior, a deep posterior, a posterior, and a lateral compartment. Now, the thing about fascia is that while muscles can grow and shrink and grow and shrink in size, Fascia cannot, it's a finite space. But think about it as this nice rigid tube. If things inside can continue to swell due to trauma or fracture or excessive leg kicks, for example, the muscle will swell in this area. And unfortunately, because the fascia doesn't give or the covering doesn't move, as the muscle continues to swell, it's gonna to start to pinch off big vessels. So we know that we have arteries and veins that go through our, our body. Arteries essentially take blood from the heart, go down into the legs. Veins take the blood from the limbs and take it back up to the heart. If there's a, a big increase in pressure in this area, essentially because the, the pressure cannot expand out, it starts to squeeze the tubes on the inside. So you get squeezing of the artery, squeezing of the vein, and Co uh, and also damage to the nerves. So the first thing that will happen is you'll squeeze the vein. And because of that, you'll actually have increased swelling in this area because blood can't go back to the heart. The pressure continues to go up. And as it continues to go up, because you can't take out any of that extra blood back to the heart, it gets high enough where it starts to squeeze the artery, which is a high pressure system. That can start to cause death of the actual tissues in the leg. So we actually call the signs and symptoms of compartment syndromes the dreadful P's. So the P's that we're looking for, pain out of proportion. So they're, these guys are screaming in pain, mainly when you also stretch the muscle. Pallor, so they're super white. Paresthesia, so they have a lot of numbness or tingling or they've lost sensation if it's truly late. Pulselessness, so that they have no pulses down below because you've squeezed off all of their arteries and veins. And then paralysis, so if things get bad, you're no longer able to move the muscle. So acute compartment syndrome is a surgical emergency and requires something called a fasciotomy to fix. Essentially what you do is you make an incision right down the skin. You cut through that fascia to help relieve the pressure. So this is what Austin had in his case. Now what you're seeing here is a, a, a sponge with a vac dressing to help kind of 
keep that area nice and stable and promote kind of wound healing at the same time. If you don't do this, the tissue can die in as quickly as six hours. So if you do this procedure and relieve the pressure within six hours, you almost have 100% outcomes and you don't have any long-term damage of tissue, paralysis, inability to function the limb, or actually a necrotic or dead limb requiring amputation. If you wait longer than six hours, up to kind of the 36 hour mark, you can have some long lasting damage. So Austin was extremely lucky that he had actually timed and, and quick clinical management of this scenario. So much so he's actually back to fighting and winning fights now. So here's a picture of him coming out of the hospital. And as you can see, he's got the vac dressing on. And this here is essentially a, a device that is connected to that vacuum dressing. So what that vacuum dressing does is we typically will put it on wounds that we can't close. So if that wound is gaping, because they essentially, they cut it open, that leg was swelling so big, so there was a nice gaping wound, they filled it with a sponge so that there wouldn't be any infection developing, but you would also create a nice wound bed for healing once the swelling goes down. So essentially this is what this device is doing. It's just taking out all the excess fluid and blood from the area on the side of his leg. Now, once the swelling goes down, that's when they can close up the area. Sometimes they'll actually need skin grafts to close it up. Now in Austin's case, if you look quite closely, it doesn't seem like he needed any skin graft, but mainly it closed pretty nicely on its own. He was told that he wouldn't be able to walk for months after the surgery. And I mean, amazingly, he was up on his feet walking within a week and training within two months. And that just goes to show you how lucky he is, but also how resilient athletes can be. Now, why was this injury so rare? Let's go back to looking at our anatomy specimen. The reason why this is a super rare injury is because the area of the thigh is such a large area, there's actually a lot of space for the thigh muscles to expand. So, I mean, none of you guys have done a really strong leg day and ended up needing surgery because there's just so much extra space given that we have such big muscles in our thigh. Typically, we actually see compartment syndrome more so in the smaller areas, so the forearms and the lower legs because there's less space for the fascia to, or there's less space for the muscle in the fascia to expand to. Whereas here it is a huge potential space. So it is almost something that we never, like we hardly see aside from really bad fractures of your long bone or femur um, in this area. And the one thing that made this injury even weirder was the fact that, you know, during the actual fight, Austin didn't sustain the level of kicks to the leg that we would have thought would require the swelling to cause this compartment syndrome. I mean, we've all seen some pretty brutal leg kicks and, and these guys sustain a lot while they're training. So it may have just been a fluke accident. It may have been the right areas were hit and it was a perfect storm, but it's quite amazing that, you know, Austin was able to recover from such a severe and career ending like injury. If you have any questions or comments about this injury, leave them down below. If you like this video and want to stay up to date on other videos I do in the future, please like and subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.